What's good with it? It's Tommy Mac, music, art, culture, knowledge. Uh, you know, live with another session of Mac Minutes. I want to talk about uh, Patrick Patterson and uh, the statements he made uh, concerning black women. I think, yeah, they. Uh, he said on Instagram, uh, he, he equated black women uh, essentially being bulldogs. And apparently this all was uh, set off by, he uploaded a picture of his wife, who happens to be a white woman. He op- he uploaded the p- her picture onto his Instagram page, and uh, people went at him, just throwing darts, saying, "You know, how could you disrespect black women? You don't want to be with a black woman. Uh, you know, if you were working at Walmart, I think somebody said, yeah, if you were working at Walmart, she wouldn't get you the time of day. Blah, blah, blah. Um, I-, I think there's an overarching theme here. I think uh, black, you know, black people. I think we've We've always had uh, this um, suicidal, this suicidal love affair with European standards. Um, uh, as far from, and and that love affair has been akin, has been tied to everything from physical appearance to social status. I think we've always, I mean, there's always been this inherent, implicit bias that Black people have had towards all things white. I mean, in essence, I think that is a byproduct of white supremacy because white supremacy. Uh, creates this internal dialectic where anything, this internal dialectic essentially where anything that is white is pristine and beautiful and holy and pure. Everything that is black is ugly and evil and nefarious. So I think um, we all have to be honest with ourselves and acknowledge the fact (coughs) as black people, there's a lot of conditioning and whitewashing that we all must unlearn. And dismantle within ourselves, and I don't care. Uh, I don't care if you uh, decide to name your son Shaka Zulu. I don't care how many uh, books you've read in Africana studies. Uh, we all. I don't care how woke you are. Essentially, uh, there's this implicit, inherent bias that we have towards all things white, and um, that's no fault of our own. It's just generation years of conditioning. Um, I'll be the first one to say. Uh, you know, love. Lo- I-, I can't say who you should and shouldn't love, but my my issue with interracial marriage or interracial dating, what have you, is when it is treated as though the grass is greener. On- the grass is always greener on the other side. Essentially, meaning, well, if I'm black, you know, my women aren't any good or my men aren't any good, so I'm gonna go mess with somebody that's white or Latino or whatever or whatever, what have you, because essentially that that's the best thing out there. That's when it's problematic. Um, I think with the whole thing uh, concerning Patrick Patterson, a lot of things come into play here. It's a lot of dynamics, a lot of moving parts, uh, specifically race, uh, economics, uh, access to wealth, access to resources. I think a lot of times, uh, you know, as your financial standing goes up, your uh, your your ecosystem changes, the people that you're around changes. You know, and let's be honest, a lot of black people aren't in, you know, with this racial divide, this racial wealth gap divide we have, a lot of black people aren't privy <laughs> to the to a lot of these uh, privileges or to be in certain scenarios and certain ecosystems that wealthy white people are in. And a lot of these brothers, you know, due to their talent, they have a lot of social mobility, so they're able to go go up the ladder. And I'm not saying that there aren't any black people in those spaces, but I just think there's a culture that they've been cemented in and they're, they're around it. They're surrounded by more whiteness, you know? And, um, I, I believe, uh, Patrick Patterson made a statement apologizing for what he said. I mean, essentially it, it sounded like he was just defending his wife at the end of the day. He was defending his wife. Um, the, I think the tragedy in the tragedy in it is he could have defended his wife without, um, disparaging black women period. Uh, however you look at it, he could have defended his wife's honor Without again disparaging black women, but I, you know, but let's let's get to it. I think, um, you know, there is a lot of truth to that. A lot of white women, and when I say truth to that, there is a lot. Somebody has said, you know, if he wasn't working at a, if he was working at Walmart, she wouldn't have gave him the time of day. And let's be honest, a lot of times when 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 you have a black man that does deal with a white woman, it's never the white woman marrying down. Or dating down economically. She's always marrying up or dating up socially, economically. So I think that says a lot. I think that's very telling. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say, I don't know the dynamics that, that are in Patrick Patterson's marriage. I don't know. She may really love to do it. I don't know. 
But I think that there is something to say that a lot of white women they they marry and date up economically. I don't I don't see that whole. You know, we built it from the ground up and we struggled together. Not to say that doesn't exist, but I don't think it's as ubiquitous as, you know, the other scenario, which is, you know, brothers are solidified economically and then these white women, they marry up. Again, um, I don't, I mean, I, I'm not going to sit here and say that uh, I'm for or against interracial marriage. I think, you know, live and let live. If that's your thing, cool. But don't disparage black women. Don't disparage black men because you so choose to date outside your race or marry outside your race. That's cool. But, you know, some people, they act as though they have like this superpower because they have a mixed baby, <laughs> you know. And I, and I think uh, or that their baby has these, in, these inherent superpowers because they're biracial. You know, I, I think that's very problematic. Um, I think uh, Patrick Patterson did say something to the effect that, uh, you know, his kids are beautiful because they're mixed. Uh, fact check me, but that's that's what I, I was I was told that he said that. And if he did say that, that's hella problematic. Um, but at the end of the day, like I just again, there's a lot of healing that needs to be done on both ends, black men and black women. I I, I just hate it that I hate the fact that LeBron literally is building an empire with a black woman, whole dynasty, and we're gonna shed light on something that Patrick Patterson said. I feel like the brothers that don't get it, the brothers that speak out of turn. The brothers that uh, say the most damaging things in context of black male and female relations, uh, they get all the press. <laughs> you know, they get all the attention, they get all the press. But I don't know, maybe people just, we just gravitate towards the nonsense. Um, but again, um, I would say I, I have encountered brothers who felt like, you know, the, the closest thing, to be, the thing that was beautiful, the closest thing to the divine was white women and let's keep it let's keep it 100 you know we live in a in a in the context of a time where white supremacy is pretty much in the midst of everything it shapes how we view the world it shapes how you know our, our biases I, and again i don't care how woke you are is there and i have encountered brothers who said well you know i always uh I always wanted a white girl but uh you know I, i'm a hood i'm a hood nigga and i knew they weren't gonna deal with me so the closest thing i could get to it was a light-skinned woman woman I've heard brothers say that, you know, I've heard, I, I remember, you know, love my grandmother, R.I.P. Lily Mae, but uh, I, remember, I can remember her saying, you know, that girl would be prettier if she was lighter. So I think we need to confront this, you know, let, let's act like, let's not act like this isn't like a multi-generational thing, uh, a, a multi-generational, uh, a multi-generational backwards thinking that hasn't been handed down because it has been, you know, I think um, at the end of the day, if we're going to say black is beautiful, we need to really believe it. You know, we need to confront our pain. We need to confront our biases, you know, because we all have this internal dialectical struggle going on amongst us internally. You know, I don't care, again, how woke you are, it's there, <laughs> you know. But, uh, you know, I remember uh, in the book, uh, Soul and Ice, Eldridge Cleaver dedicated a whole chapter essentially saying how, like, you know, he wanted a white woman because essentially white male patriarchy, white male um, hegemony, was the order of the day. And what was always shown as the trophy, white men have put that white woman on the pedestal. So a lot of brothers did think, you know, that was success, getting a white woman. Eldridge Cleaver expounded on an in Soul on Ice. He had a whole chapter dedicated to it. And I think towards the end of it, of that chapter, he acknowledged the fact, he acknowledges the fact that, look, I have been conditioned and I have forsaken my women, my black women, as a consequence. So my thing is, um, this thing with Patrick Patterson is not new. Uh, I think it's something that we need to confront. You know, uh, I, I think just in general, black men and black women, we haven't always accepted, uh, you know, black is truly being beautiful. You know, and I don't care. Uh, this isn't just a black male thing. This is a black people thing. I think I saw somewhere in uh, Jamaica where people are uh, actually soaking in some type of chemicals to get the, the the layers of the melanin pulled off of their skin so they can be lighter. You know, and we all know about the whole bleaching thing, the whole bleaching cream and whatnot. But uh, I want to end this Mac minute. I could go on all day. I could write a PhD thesis on this uh, dissertation, what have you. Um, but my thing is, if we're going to say black is beautiful, if, we, if we're woke, and we're, we're going to be black and proud, then, let, then let's confront our conditioning because it's there. Uh, like, share, comment, subscribe, 82 Kings. Uh, follow the movement, Mac TV underscore 82. Mac TV podcast, music, art, coach, and knowledge. Click that notification bell for the YouTube channel so you can get all the updates. Peace and love. Salute. Y'all be blessed.